Hi there, this is Ross at Wood Fire Power, and this is another installment on how to build your own aquaponics setup. So, the table here is going to be 4 feet wide by 16 feet long, and over there is the uh, reservoir for the fish. And what we've done today is to dig the um, cinder blocks down into the ground. So in some places we built it up and this isn't the most fancy way that you could do this. It's just a quick and reasonably easy way to get the job done. It's, you know, it's not really going to matter if the table settles a little bit. Um, you can be fancier with cement or mortar or whatever you want to do, but if you just set it down, it's going to work fine. Um, the construction is with 2 by 6 and it turns out, if you look up the pricing, that by the time you get thick enough plywood to carry the weight of all the gravel, it's actually less expensive to just buy 2 by 6 framing lumber and it's pretty easy to work with. You just buy a bunch of 16 footers, it takes um, either eight or nine of them uh, to make up pretty close to 48 inches. And then we'll put some vertical ones around the perimeter to create the walls and then line it with plastic and uh, that'll be the bin and then we'll be putting the bell siphon in at one end in a recession. So. To lay it out, what we did was to put some rebar stakes, so any old stake would be fine. And then uh, we picked up the line of the sun, and if you don't know how to determine east-west by sticking a pole in the ground, um, well, here I can show you right here real quick. Well, this is just the end, the shadow at the end of my shovel, so it'd work better if it was a vertical shadow. Um, oh, here we go. Um, if it's on level ground, then here is the tip of the shadow from that piece of rebar. So if you put a mark there, and then come back several hours later, the well, actually, the sun would have been up here. It's getting later in the day. It's now down to here, and later in the day, the sun's going to be setting and going down, and the shadow will be out over here, getting longer. The line that the tip of the shadow makes on level ground is east-west. So that's an easy way to figure that out. Then, um, what we did is just to use cinder blocks, because they're couple bucks a piece and they form a nice sturdy support structure um, and we alternated them so we had some that are horizontal that way and then we put the next ones perpendicular and then perpendicular and perpendicular that way you're creating uh, lateral and cross shear so that the table doesn't want to tip over. So even if the dirt settles a little bit, it's going to be pretty structurally sound. Then as far as leveling the pure blocks, we use the water level, and if people don't know how to use a water level, you know, give me some questions and I'll maybe do a special video on that, but we just found where we wanted it to be, roughly, made a flag on one of the pieces of rebar, and then took the water level, and all it is is uh, three eighths or larger, so three eighths or half inch diameter tubing, clear plastic tubing, and you adjust it until the level of the water here is at the tape where you decided you wanted it to be. So that's the top of that third run of blocks. So that's where we wanted the table to be, that's where we put the tape or not the table actually, it's the top of the pier blocks. So then 
we take the water level and one person stays here and the other person goes to each of the other four stakes that are laid out four feet apart and longer than 16 feet just so that you get straight lines um, on the string at the end of the day and <clears throat> so the person on the other end of the water level raises and lowers it until the first person says okay that's lined up and then you put a piece of tape here and so the top of this tape and the top of that tape over there and on the first fourth one they're all um, at the same elevation according to the water level so now that's your layout line then we measure down the distance of two blocks so whatever blocks you pick might be slightly different than ours they're roughly eight inches but they leave room for the mortar so they're more like seven and a quarter and so we measure down two blocks and three blocks and just drew some lines there and if you don't know how to do a dry line attachment let me just show you really quick because it's a very useful way to make a knot you pull the line and I'm just going to use the end of this and all you do is after you pull the line taut you just wrap this around with your finger like six eight times stick it over and then you pull it taut and then you pull this back and let go and it winds up and it holds and that's super nice because when you want to take it down you just come back to this pull it taut again and it lets go and releases and there's no knot in there you don't have to be undoing a knot so that's how you should do a dry line um, then for the block we set it about six inches but you can see this side's four inches the other side's more like eight inches um, as a construction superintendent I worked for once upon a time used to all say often it ain't a piano so you know don't worry about it and then after leveling the individual pier blocks take care to level the pier blocks in both directions dig it out or build it up and take extra time and um, well it's hard to see but you know basically the height of that pier block is even with this I can't you know I'm not quite sure how to hold this to show that to you but um, and we're on a little bit of a grade so we have one pier block to get up to or cinder block I should say so we have on the first two up there we have one cinder block to get the string height and then down here we have three uh, or I mean two excuse me and then we stack them all up so that they are at the same elevation and then put one piece of two by six across each of them and then just stack the two by sixes on top of that and then we'll be stacking uh, two by a two by six and a two by eight to build up to a tray that'll hold 12 inches of rock and that's pretty much it so we're just about to fasten the two by sixes down and um, get the tray set up and constructed and then from there it's going to drain into a little reservoir bin which is that guy over there and we'll grow duckweed in that and then the so the tray's going to drain into the bin that's growing duckweed food for the fish and then the duckweed um, the return water is gonna fall into the fish reservoir and each time it goes it's going to carry a little charge of fish food so about every 20 minutes there's gonna, going to be a little bit of duckweed fish food that falls into the fish pond and they'll eat that all up and hopefully we have the duckweed growing container sized large enough for the number of fish we're going to have so that's the update for today and I'll show you more after we get the tray completed and loaded with gravel